There have been many disasters in the city of Port Huron, most of them caused by fire. Several come to mind. I think of the uh, Bear Block, uh, which uh, this uh, photograph shows, the White Block, which was on Water Street. Uh, that's the, the result after the fire, what it looked like. And then, of course, there was the uh, McMoran Grain Elevator. And not only McMoran, but uh, two or three other elevators were destroyed by fire as well. And then, of course, uh, there was the Opera House on Military Street and uh, the Courthouse on Huron Avenue. Many hotels were destroyed by fire, including this one here, which was the St. Clair Hotel. Then there was a devastating fire from the Grand Trunk uh, car shops, uh, where the, uh, well, near where the Blue Water Bridge would later be built, where the paper company is today. I could go on with these fires. There have been a lot of them in the city of Port Huron, but there have been many uh, disasters that were caused by explosion. Only one comes to the top of my mind, and that's the Omar Conger Ferry explosion, which was on the Black River. Most all these fires had a tremendous amount of property damage, but very little loss of life. Of course, the Omar Conger explosion had uh, four or five people that were in the crew that got killed, but for the most part, uh, it was mostly property damage, at least until December of 1971 where there's another explosion I want to talk to you about in this video today. And that is the Detroit Water Tunnel explosion, which was uh, located north of town up by Metcalf Road on Lake Huron. And this disaster had a tremendous uh, loss of life. But let's start at the beginning. In the mid-1960s, southeastern Michigan's population was outgrowing its water supply capacity. A new water treatment plant was envisioned to serve the Detroit and Flint markets. And in 1968, the Detroit Metro Water Department began the Herculean task of digging a six mile long tunnel through the bedrock underneath Lake Huron. This map shows you where the intake tunnel was located right near Metcalf Road. The 123 million Lake Huron water supply project involved erecting a submerged intake crib connecting a 16 foot wide six-mile intake tunnel under the lake. A mechanical device bored through the bedrock beneath the lake at a rate of 150 feet a day. The project excavated more than one billion pounds of rock. The plan was to tunnel simultaneously from the shore and the intake and meet in the middle. At the lake end of the tunnel, seven watertight enclosures, known as coffer dams, were positioned in a circle and used to protect workers building the intake. Early in December of 1971, work in the tunnel was within weeks of completion. Around 11 a.m. on Saturday, December 11th, 43 men descended into the tunnel, roughly 230 feet below the surface. They were working on the last online mile at the shore end. The men of the tunnel didn't know that drilling was planned out at the copper dam, where crews were going to drill down through the remaining eight feet of shale to the top of the tunnel. The men on the drilling platform thought the tunnel was empty. The drill bit broke through the concrete roof of the tunnel as planned, and the crew broke for lunch, not knowing that the bit cut through at least one pocket of methane gas, which then bent it into the tunnel. After lunch, the crew tried to retrieve the bit, but encountered resistance, so they decided to activate a release mechanism. The heavy drill bit fell to the bottom of the tunnel or experts say it created a spark upon impact with the concrete. The spark ignited the accumulated methane and created a tremendous explosion. On the drilling platform, crew members felt a hot blast of air shoot from the hole accompanied by a sound like a jet taking off, according to one of the drillers. Debris shot out of both ends of the tunnel. The blast created a shockwave with a speed of 4,000 miles an hour and a force of 15,000 pounds per square inch. The shock wave ripped through the corrugated sheet metal air ducts used for ventilation to shreds of sharp metal. Tools and chunks of concrete were turned into deadly projectiles. A 15-ton crane was thrown more than a third of a mile. Rescue workers eventually extracted 21 bodies. The 
Ben's 22nd victim died 10 months after the explosion. Another 22 men made it out of the tunnel alive, but injured. The caption on this photo reads, Rescuers help a stumbling survivor of explosion Saturday in tunnel under Lake Huron. A five-ton gantry used to pour concrete was shoved about a thousand feet toward the shaft's entrance. Hundreds of police from five agencies descended on the location, where they gathered at the tunnel entrance with sheriff's officers from St. Clair County, firefighters, and other emergency personnel. Worried family members clasp hands while waiting for information about their loved ones. A woman is overcome by emotion in the waiting area. A volunteer fireman who worked on the response team said, It looked like a hydrogen bomb hit that tunnel. Those who were killed were more than four and a half miles from the explosion epicenter. Construction crew employees waited for a word about their co-workers. In this photograph, the rescue workers show their fatigue as they leave the tunnel entrance. Anxious family members were updated on the tragedy as information became available. Before the tragedy, most of those who worked in the tunnel were less worried about an explosion than they were of flooding from drilling taking place at the intake five miles out in Lake Huron. A crack can be seen in this photograph on the side of the tunnel as debris is removed. Gerald Remus, general manager and chief engineer on the project, gives an update to reporters on the scene. The explosion took place on a Saturday, and this was the front page of the Sunday paper in the Times-Herald. 17 killed, others feared dead in gas explosion at tunnel. This photograph isn't real clear, but you can make it out. The caption says this, the scene near Metcalf Road during rescue operations. A long line of ambulances, fire trucks, and rescue vehicles line the entrance road to the Detroit Metropolitan Water System's Fort Gratiot Water Project Saturday afternoon as rescue operations for the victims of an underground explosion move into high gear. Some 25 ambulances from all parts of eastern Michigan answered the call for help, along with scores of officers and volunteers. The elevator entrance leading to the underground tunnel, 238 feet below the surface, is at the right. This view looks north. The entrance road leads to Metcalf Road at the top of the photo. As we go down here, you see metal debris block rescue operations. As we go over here to the right, you see a photograph of an injured worker being brought out. On page two and three of the same newspaper, we have these photographs. In this photo on the left-hand side, you see the workers uh, readying oxygen tanks for the trip back into the tunnel. And then the photographs over to the right, the top two are, uh, the first one is the, uh, the first uh, employee to reach the surface. And then the one to the right of that is uh, one of the ones that was rescued. And as we go down, a photograph on the left-hand side shows a, a group of the employees waiting for the elevator that takes them down to the tunnel, saying that it's a busy place, and it was. And to the right of that shows the general manager of the Detroit Metropolitan Water Department. And here we have the second page. A large photograph on the left shows the elevator that leads to the blast area. Part of the caption says, rescue workers prepare to descend to the bottom of the shaft leading to the water project tunnel some 238 feet under the ground to help rescue some of the trapped workers. And then over to the right, victim rushed to ambulance. And then up above that, it shows some of the twisted air duct that was brought to the surface. And then as we scroll down, on the left-hand side, it says, supplies to aid the injured. Rushing supplies to the rescue area his deputy sheriff at right and volunteer at left. A deputy is carrying water bottles, while a stretcher is made ready to receive one of the victims to the surface. Below that, many agencies were represented. It shows some of them. And the large picture over the right, caption reads, Center of Activity, Searchlights Flood the Scene at the Entrance of the Water Tunnel Elevator 
at the project area off Metcalf Road in Fort Gratiot Township. Ambulances moved into the entrance zone throughout the rescue operations as victims were brought to the surface. Reporters from all over descended upon the tunnel site. In this photograph, you can see the reporters and photographers surrounding Governor Milliken at the site. And this is perhaps one of the saddest photographs that were taken that day. The caption reads, The wife of one of the workers killed leaves a water tunnel explosion site carrying his work boots and coat. The caption on this photograph says, Saying goodbye, the first of 22 funerals for the man killed while building the water intake tunnel for the Detroit Water Systems Plant in Fort Gratiot was on a dreary, drizzly day. Thirty lawsuits were filed in Wayne County about the explosion. Eventually, eight and a half million dollars, a record in 1976, was awarded to several plaintiffs. The families of the men who died in the tunnel each received $750 from the state of Michigan for funeral expenses. Widows received $79 a week for 10 years. Those with children got $102 a week. But I'm not so sure that they were treated fairly as far as expenses were concerned. That's not much money even back then in 1971. By April of 1972, construction had resumed on the project. Meanwhile, the tragedy spurred changes in Michigan's occupational safety laws to offer more protection for industrial workers and an easier path to seek remedy from negligent employers. At the project's completion on December 12, 1973, General Manager Gerald Remus displays a plaque of acknowledgments. His official report said, the new supply, together with other construction and existing sources, will provide fresh water needs for some 8 million Southeast Michigan residents beyond the year 2020. It took over 30 years for a memorial to be considered for the men that lost their lives in the tunnel. And I think this article that was written in 2002 in the Times Herald describes the frustration of so many that these men weren't remembered. This article was written by a widow of one of the men that lost her lives in the explosion. I'll let you read this at your leisure, but I would like to highlight the part of it for you. She says, 31 years later, it is very hard to understand that not one plaque or memorial was ever erected for these men. It's as if the explosion never happened, swept under the rug. We cannot let the lives of these men be forgotten. These were real men, fathers, sons, husbands, grandfathers, friends, real people with real families. It is a shame to our community that this historical event has not rightly been remembered. Many of our husbands were brought from the tunnel in body bags, unrecognizable. All 22 must be remembered. It was an uphill battle for the group that was trying to get the memorial because of finances. They were trying to raise $50,000. And must be that that $50,000 did not come easy because this article was in uh, the Times Herald 2002 and they didn't see their dream fulfilled until 2007, when this appeared on the front page of the Times Herald. It took a long time, but the group persevered, and the memorial was built. It took five years after the widow wrote that article in the Times Herald. It took 36 years to have a memorial that honored the men that lost their life on that tragic day. December 11, 1971.